But today I've got the great pleasure of talking with um, David because he's going to come in in March and talk in the PDA space portal. And I'm going to hand over to David um, to introduce himself. And then we're going to just talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering. Okay, uh, I'm David Gray Hammond. I run the blog Emergent Divergence, and uh, I also run uh, DGH Neurodivergent Consultancy. I am an advocate, mentor, consultant, and author. Um, I wrote the book The New Normal Autistic Musings on a Threat of a Broken Society and a Treatise on Chaos. Um, I've done a lot of work uh, with people and organisations around autistic people's experiences of mental health and uh, substance use and addiction. And yeah, that's that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Loads. You you know, you, you do a great deal, you know, and you I'm not quite sure how you fit it all in. And as um a dad to a tiny one, a very tiny one, mm. a few months old, tiny one. Yes. So congratulations on, you. on your um, new role in life, your additional best role that you can have. And in the portal in March, we're going to be covering, or you're going to come in and speak, aren't you, in, about this whole um, situation that many autistics well, actually, let me reframe that. Many um, uh, parents, when they seek support for their child or adults, when they seek support, get patholog pathologized versus actually um, looking at what's going on. Do you, can you explain a little bit more about what we're going? you're going to cover? Um, yeah, so autistic people often have to seek support for their mental health. We're at uh, there's a much higher chance that that we will experience mental health issues, especially. So, yes, yeah, school age autistic children often need support with their mental health. Um, and uh, so do autistic adults, for that matter. And um, we often find, well, we always find when we approach mental health services, we are treated as though our mental health is disordered. Um, as if we're broken, as if there is something wrong with us. And really, this is the wider issue in society, is the fact that uh, mental health and human distress has been medicalised and pathologised. So what I intend to look at is um, how has our mental well-being been medicalised and what sort of purpose does its medicalization? play what is the role of trauma in our distress and how can we understand our our further neurodivergence because i do personally subscribe to the idea that mental health or mental illness is actually further neurodivergence how can we understand that neurodivergence of our mental health through the lens of neurodiversity And that is just such a big one, isn't it? Because as you say, um, I'm not dismissing adults at all. I really don't want to. But when your child is struggling emotionally and because of where this is going to get put and aired, I don't want to go into too many specifics, but, you know, really caught crying out for support and help. Um, it can be really difficult to receive that help. And very often as well, um, a certain organisation within the NHS will say, oh, we can't support because it's just their autism or their neuro... Well, they don't normally say neurodivergence, but it's their autism. We can't do anything. Yeah. Um, that certain organisation, there, there, there is a wider issue worldwide really with the fact that distress seems to be taken as a given in autistic children when actually 
it's not part of the diagnostic criteria. There is an argument to be made that the diagnostic criteria in the DSM actually describes a distressed autistic person, but the stress is not part of the diagnostic criteria. We should not just assume that distress is a normal part of being autistic because it's not. And that, I think, is the golden nugget. What you've just said, that we are not, um, that, you know, being distressed ought to be part of the diagnostic uh, process or other professionals, you know, if, if somebody isn't distressed to acknowledge that they can that that young person or adult is autistic. I'm referring a lot here in regarding children because the PDA portal space is mainly for parents and carers and professionals to supporting young people, but it, all of this is relevant to adults as well, isn't it? Yeah. So we are going to be covering, um, or you will be covering this and, and supporting um, parents with some of the questions. Uh, yes. and any questions they've got if they can email in to admin at the PDA space early so we can forward them on to you is there anything else that you would like to do well, I think I think that's a pretty good indication of the sort of thing that we're going to be covering in this workshop uh, you know don't want to give too much away so <laughs> And what hopefully I'll have my book by then and I'll be like, here's the book. Ding ding. Um and you know, and I I think you've done all a great deal of research. You know, this is um something you've spent a great deal of time on, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And spent years working on stuff like this, so. So it's, I, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm really grateful because this is such a big area, you know, from my personal experience with my children and myself, ironically, you know, um, and this being broken and mental health issues rather than looking and understanding. Um, well, obviously, because I'm, as one of my kids says, I'm a dinosaur. You know, um, the understanding of autism wasn't even there at that point. Um, so I'm really grateful. I'm really grateful that you're going to be coming in in March to come and speak and support so many parents. Thank you very much. <laughs>